Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for being here with us today. My right to have our first vice president, Mr. Martin Curling. Our guest, Mr. Asegawa, the president and chairman of Kesai de Lukai. My name is Baumgartner. I'm the president of uh, the press club. Please uh, set your uh, dosimeters in a good manner mode during the speech of Mr. Asegawa. It's nice to have the chance today to ask the chairman of Kesai de Lukai. He's also the president of uh, uh, Takeda, uh, his impressions about a country, uh, Japan, in a total state of political, bureaucratic, and economic paralysis since and even before the giant earthquake and the tsunami and the accident in the nuclear plant in Fukushima. It's amazing to see how Japan, in a quarter of a century, managed to regress so much. It's interesting to ask Mr. Asegawa, considered as one of the most reform-minded executives in Japan, why this country is so allergic to reform, even after such a massive shock in the Toho. Can also Japan reform its culture of collusion, so brilliantly described in the case of Fukushima by our colleagues of the New York Times, among others, a culture supporting the nuclear industry, including the government, the nuclear regulators, plant operators, the established media, a culture extending to the court in Japan. We can also ask the chairman of KSI Toyukai uh, why the business community has not been more vocal and clear enough to push reforms in Japan when the situation in Fukushima is still considered as grave by the French Minister of the Environment. She's not opposed to the nuclear energy, believe me. And, why, and when the next meltdown could be uh, the Japanese uh, public debt. Please reserve a very warm welcome to Mr. Asimov. When I was uh, in the waiting room uh, to waiting for the start of this uh, lunch session, uh, he was uh, asking uh, all kind of nasty questions to me. So I told him uh, I want to answer this uh, presentation today because I don't want to get into a very hostile environment. This is supposed to be a very uh, friendly environment. So be nice to me. <laughs> Uh, please let me uh, begin by expressing my heartfelt condolences to the families and the friends of the victims of the Great Peace As uh, Japan Asprey. I want to extend my sincerest sympathies to all who have suffered and con continue to face difficulties and discomfort. I also wish to express my deepest uh, respect for all involved in the rescue and restoration efforts throughout the disaster zone. Finally, I want to take this opportunity to convey my feelings of gratitude for the warm support received from more than 140 countries and regions around the world, also 39 international organizations. The attention of Japan as a nation is not uh, squarely uh, focused on the unprecedented destruction caused by the massive earthquake and the tsunami but also the ongoing saga at the uh, Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power, power station, which will require ongoing efforts for some time, hopefully short, well, shorter than uh, uh, we are anticipating. However, at the same time, Japan is also confronted with many issues that have been neglected for many years. It is uh, no exaggeration to say that Japan today faces its greatest crisis since the uh, devastation at the end of World War II. It is in such a time of crisis that I have been uh, appointed the chairman of KSI Goyu uh, While the uh, timing is a co uh, coincidence, I am painfully aware of the weight of the responsibility and that comes with this appointment to lead, the, uh, lead an organization with so rich a history and a tradition in Japan. As chairman of KSI Goyu there are two objectives I hope to achieve. The first is to aid Japan to overcome the current crisis and the rebuilding as a nation brimming with vitality. With this in mind, improvements can be made to the safety and the security of our lives, and the Japanese people can look forward with hope. 
The second is for Japan to win the confidence uh, and trust of countries worldwide by playing a key role in uh, contributing to peace and prosperity throughout the globe. The Great East Japan earthquake has uh, caused destruction on an unprecedented scale. In witnessing the ongoing suffering, one realizes the importance of uh, mounting a uh, united effort for supporting the recovery and restoration of the disaster stricken areas. This effort, no doubt, must be led by strong political leadership with support from organizations and individuals alike to light the torch of hope for those in the affected areas this should involve a well-timed series of medium and long-term recovery and restoration plans thus far Keizai Doyuke has issued two urgent appeals and formed the earthquake recovery project team the project team has already launched the studies to create restoration and reconstruction uh, proposals in addition, it has initiated activities for verification and recommendation regarding the uh, preparedness for future massive earthquakes, including those in the Tokyo metropolitan area and the Tonankai, further south, down the south, <coughs> uh, offshore of uh, Chubu area. At the uh, beginning of this year, uh, KZ Oyuka published its vision of the Japan 2020 a presentation of our comprehensive vision for the future of Japan. The disaster struck soon after releasing this document, but we don't, do not feel that this makes any major changes to the vision are necessary. Needless to say, reconstruction projects in the areas affected by the disaster will require additional fiscal spending, uh, which will likely delay the achievement of the primary uh, fiscal balance by a few years, maybe, Taking such factors into consideration, some minor adjustment to the vision uh, may be unavoidable. However, our position is that a blueprint of the recovery and reconstruction should be uh, drawn up in line with our vision for the future of Japan. In fact, we believe that the recent disaster has added greater urgency to the realization of this vision. We should not overlook the impact that this disaster has had on a global scale. In particular, uh, we must uh, be mindful of the international implications of the situation at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. Not only has its mismanaged response and the disclosure of information critically damaged trust and confidence toward Japan, but widespread distrust of media coverage on uh, Radioactive contamination has led to a mass exodus of foreigners living in Japan. Thank you for staying with us. <laughs> Additionally, uh, the number of foreign visitors to Japan has significantly dropped, and the uh, trade and uh, marketing of agriculture and fishery product has been significantly halted. The direct economic losses generated by these reactions are enormous. Thank God, uh, three nations leaders are uh, meeting took place amongst China and Korea and uh, Japan in the last few days. Uh, will give some uh, positive impact to restore the, or recover from this harmful rumors. The uh, disaster-stricken areas are home to a large number of manufacturing facilities specializing in advanced industrial parts and components. Many of the facilities were destroyed or are forced to suspend shipping and production. The interruption of the supplies is a source of concern for both domestic and worldwide uh, manufacturers. However, in order to restore uh, restart production as soon as possible, recovery supports, uh, support teams were sent in immediately from other division of the affected companies and from companies that rely on these manufacturers. This form of cooperation among the private businesses, drawing on our experiences from past natural disasters, is something that Japan can be proud of. Nonetheless, of the halt of the supplies and the shipment schedules makes it difficult to maintain the trust of overseas customers. And we must be aware that the regaining trust will take time. 
once the current situation settles down, it will be uh, crucial for business and the central and the local governments to carefully analyze the, the disaster for future preparedness. I'm not good at baby. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the only one. <laughs> the population of the world will set, uh, surpass the 7 billion, uh, 7 billion mark during this year, towards the end of this year. Current projections indicate that global population will uh, continue to grow and the peak around 9 billion in 2050. By the way, the United Nations just recently announced their study result which illustrates uh, that uh, uh, global, uh, world population will reach 10 billion instead of 9 million uh, around 2080. Uh, after which it will gradually decline. Most of this uh, growth is expected uh, to take place in Africa and Asia, including the Middle East. It is very clear now that actions uh, will have to be taken over the next 40 years to how to uh, manage this uh, transition period. Uh, interestingly, uh, when you reach to the certain level of the uh, uh, living standard, uh, the population of that any given nation start flattening and they start decline. So, uh, you know, uh, ironically, instead of uh, uh, you know taking the resources uh, from those underdeveloping countries, we need to help them so that they can uh, take off and uh, enjoy the uh, better lifestyle. That's the only way we can stop the uh, ever increasing. Uh, population in the, in the world. Uh, developed nations that have faced uh, uh, these challenges must cooperate with industrializing economies to provide the developing world accumulated knowledge, technologies, and capital to assist in their growth. I believe this is the most realistic strategy available to the world. Judging from this perspective, the reduction of Japan's ODA budget to help finance the disaster recovery effort would be a very questionable policy choice. We should bear in mind that Japan's contributions need not to be limited to the sharing of knowledge, technologies, and capital. Over many uh, centuries, Japan has uh, fostered lifestyles that are in harmony with nature. Also, the spirit of thrift and frugality embodied in the uniquely Japanese phrase motainai aligns well uh, with the modern concept of the three R's, namely reduce, reuse, recycle. I believe that these are values truly worthy of being shared with the rest of the world. The performance this uh, the, the, to perform this important role, it is necessary to Japan, for Japan uh, to foster innovation and continue to grow. During uh, uh, his uh, four years in office, my predecessor, uh, uh, former chairman uh, uh, of Toyota Masamitsu, uh, Masamitsu Sakurai, established a vision of Japan 2020. The task of realizing this vision has now been entrusted onto to me. It is my belief that economic growth holds the key to building a uh, prosperous Japan, and it will therefore be my top priority during my tenure. Keizai Doyuka is committed to uh, its vision uh, for the future of Japan. We have two broad objectives. The first is to create a country of brimming energy and hope. This, of course, requires an assurance of human security, including the ability for all members of the society to enjoy stability in their lives. To achieve human security, the average person on the street our business, our government must come together to achieve both qualitative and quantitative growth. The second objective is uh, for Japan to be recognized as a key contributor to global peace and prosperity. This entails uh, mobilizing all the wealth, knowledge, technologies, human resources, and the values that we have, and to apply it uh, in a concerted way to contribute to the be uh, betterment of the world. Japan uh, faces a special challenge in that 
it must realize the growth despite the uh, de uh, decreasing population. Success hinges on the ability to achieve dramatic improvement in the per capita productivity, simply to survive business and the um, you know, countries alike must learn to succeed through globalization and the diversification and pursuing innovation. The forces of globalization cannot be avoided. To respond effectively to globalization, Japan must rid itself of its inward orientation. We must make a conscious effort to capitalize on the vitality of other countries. Japan must foster creativity, not in a homogeneous setting, but in an increasing diverse environment. Its energies must be channeled uh, toward human resources development and R&D. To make the most of this, we need to greatly encourage creativity and the entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial spirit. To realize a meaningful change, we must act decisively. In this regard, I am reminded of the former U.S. Vice President Al Gore, who criticized those who ignore the sign of uh, impending global warming and uh, failed to take preventative action. As he put it, global warming was nothing but an inconvenient truth. In much the same way, uh, we find that many difficult problems that face Japan have been ignored as inconvenient truths. Our inconvenient truths include uh, declining birth rate combined with aging of our society and the increased global competition through the uh, flattening of the world. At the same time, we are also faced by the realities of our enormous cumulative debt and the social security system that is unsustainable. And when choosing the government to lead us, there is a serious uh, disparity in the value of electoral votes. I feel that we have, fought, uh, we have far too long uh, turned our eyes away from th these uh, inconvenient truths. It is uh, we, uh, the corporate executives of Japan, who bear the heaviest responsibility in uh, translating the hope of economic growth into reality. Therefore, we must be the first to directly challenge these inconvenient truths and engage in the process of reform. I believe there are uh, three specific steps that we must uh, take as corporate executives. As our first step, we must enhance our presence in the fast growing markets of the world and endeavor to globalize our management. It is uh, futile to focus on intensified competition within the confines of the shrinking domestic market. It is necessary for us to recognize and uh, integrate our corporate structures so that we can compete head on with the leading global players. For it is, th it is uh, through this uh, process that we can enhance our presence in the fastest growing markets of the world. There are many uh, uh, concrete uh, tasks that must be performed if we are to be successful. Specifically, uh, we must make our corporate organization more responsive to the changes being driven by globalization strengthen our uh, mechanism for risk management and uh, be bold in the recruiting and the training global minded human resources. Our second step, uh, maybe I move to uh, so can you move this back? Uh, our second step is to hire and retain highly diverse human resources. Organizations characterized by homogeneity are unable to accurately gauge diversifying market needs and thus cannot survive in under intense global competition. We must now recruit and utilize outstanding human resources domestically and internationally with no regard to age, gender, and nationality. In the case of Japanese companies, promoting greater involvement of women stance is critical. The government established the goal of increasing the level of women in the leadership position to 30% by 2020, but it is up to the business community to take the initiative to make that happen. 
The third step, uh, we must focus on involves the promotion of innovation and the creation of new businesses and industries. Needless to say, uh, const, uh, constant innovation is the wellspring of the corporate growth. We must continue to innovate and uh, endeavor to stay ahead of the competition. Today, the countries of the world are confronted with a myriad of problems such as declining birth rates and aging societies, poverty, illness and infectious diseases, global warming and encroaching shortage of food resources and energy. However, within the needs uh, that must be met uh, to solve these problems, there are new opportunities for growth. Uh, businesses must uh, actively engage in innovation that is uh, focused on solving both of these problems and in doing so, uh, create uh, new businesses and uh, new industries. In a rapidly changing environment, the risk of doing nothing is often larger than the risk of undertaking new challenges with calculated risk. Now is the time for us to reflect on this. I don't say Takeda's big acquisition is a wrong business. Only after a business uh, commit, to, commit to these uh, challenges uh, will Japan uh, be able to make a true recovery from the recent disaster and rebuild itself as a nation full of vitality. The government role in the realization of the economic growth is uh, to trust in the activities of the private sector and to create an environment conducive to the private sector's innovative spirit. Therefore, we call upon the government to promote regulatory reform backed by the strong political commitment. This includes taking action in the following areas, uh, contributing to the successful conclusion of the WTO Doha Round, uh, promoting the uh, conclusion of a free trade agreement and the economic partnership agreement, such as the uh, Trans-Pacific Strategic Economic Partnership Agreement, further admitting highly skilled human resources from abroad, encouraging foreign uh, direct investment in Japan by lowering corporate tax rates, and creating more attractive environment for corporate activities, and introducing uh, Doshu, say, it means a super prefecture system, uh, based on the regional uh, autonomy. In pursuing these initiatives, we honestly hope that the government will commit to establishing the uh, foundations for growth and the realization of overall economic development. We must recognize that we live in, the age, in an age when serious mistakes can be made if we view these challenges as purely internal and domestic matters. In a world of uh, increasing, uh, glo increasing globalization, countries are turning to strong political leadership to formulate and implement uh, pertinent national strategies. It is essential for us to realize that Japan is not the only country that cannot hesitate to take actions in such areas. From this perspective in Japan, uh, we are calling upon our politicians to stop averting their eyes from an, our inconvenient truths and instead to exercise a strong leadership in the directory confronting these issues. Many of Japan, Japan's uh, social systems were created on the premise high growth of the population and the economy. As a result, the deadlock is uh, most evident in our social security system, including our public pension system, provision of long-term care for the elderly, and the healthcare system. It is regretful that no fundamental solutions have, uh, though there, uh, there are um, solutions have, uh, have been implemented to date for dealing with uh, uh, these critical issues, even though there are countless ideas proposed, uh, proposed uh, ideas and proposals presented. In fact, the government has not yet even created a national ID numbering system for all individuals, which is the most basic measures uh, to, to, uh, toward uh, resolving these problems and the improved government process dramatically. While, example, uh, uh, while examples of other long avoided inconvenient truths are many, I'd like to mention the problem of disparity in the value of the electoral votes. 
On March 23rd, the Supreme Court issued a clear and nearly unanimous 14 to 1 ruling on the unconstitutionality of the apportionment in the 2009 lower house elections. The implication of uh, this ruling is that lower house elections cannot be held until the uh, current apportionment of seats is revised. Although the Constitution of Japan guarantees full equality for all citizens, uh, this infringes, infringement of the Constitution has long been ignored. However, with the recent ruling, it can no longer be neglected. I believe that this is an uh, issue this uh, issue is linked to many of our national problems, such as over-representation of elderly in countryside while under-representing uh, young uh, in urban areas. And as such, further uh, postponement of uh, its resolution cannot be tolerated. But uh, I was uh, stunned to find uh, uh, a few days ago on the newspaper article that the current DPJ uh, diet decided that uh, this uh, Supreme Court ruling is not uh, inhibit uh, the uh, Prime Minister's uh, uh, right to dissolve the, uh, the diet. So what does it mean is a very question. Uh, they may run the uh, general election, but same lawyers who appealed or who filed the lawsuits of unconstitutionality of the apportionment may do the same thing. And if uh, when they come to the uh, uh, Supreme Court, they have to rule the same way. And what's going to happen? That's a big question. Nobody asks. So media people, please ask them. We call on all members of the parliament to remember that the diet and the politi political parties are unique, that they alone are empowered to enact laws for self-regulation. In other words, we require high ethical awareness and the full uh, form a foremost commitment to the best interest of Japan from all uh, politicians and political parties. Just five more minutes. The prospects uh, drafted by the founders of KZO Yukai states, we stand ready as members of the business community to de uh, dedicate all our efforts to the con construction of New Japan. Having experienced the unprecedented disruption caused by the Great East Japan earthquake, this sentiment uh, once again draws us all together today. This tradition of uh, selfless commitment fostered by our predecessors is alive within us today. Now it is our duty to further strengthen uh, this tradition and to pass the torch uh, to future generations. The membership of KZO Yukai consists of social-minded corporate executives. We come together to engage in a frank discussion in an environment unfettered by the uh, interest of any one company or industry. This free exchange of ideas has allowed us to make many bold proposals to promote growth and prosperity for all. This is a tradition that we will be carry, uh, carrying, for, uh, carrying forward. On the other hand, in today's world, public debate and high-quality proposal also uh, come from various uh, quarters of the society to ensure that the proposal of KZU Yuka remain uh, uh, relevant and uh, provide long-term value. We cannot ignore the inconvenient truths that our effort to, uh, to do not carry the weight that they once did. I think this is the last. The preamble of the Constitution of Japan contains the following words. We desire to occupy an honored place in an international society. I believe this is faithfully reflects the hopes of Japanese people immediately after the end of the World War II. As a nation, all eyes are focused on the pro uh, promise of the future and our recovery as a nation. Today, we are confronted by challenges equal in scale and the severity. It is now that all the knowledge and the power of the nation must be once again focused, or focused to overcome a crisis. To allow us to rebuild Japan as a vibrant nation, brimming with the vitality that is valued for its meaningful uh, contributions to global society. 
for, for an ever increasing number of the countries to value Japan for its contribution to global society, we must continue giving even in our a moment of greatest adversity. We must continue and increase the flow of our ODA and the technical assistance to the protect, uh, poorest and the developing countries of the world in line with the values stated in our constitution. The constitution of Japan states the Japanese people forever renounce war as the sovereign right of the nation and the treat a uh, threat of the use of force as means of settling international disputes. As you will all be aware, we have long avoided by uh, this uh, principle of non-aggression. Uh, sharing the value of non-aggression is the is the one path uh, to bring uh, stability uh, to a region or world, thereby solving one contributor uh, contributor of poverty. Furthermore, by sharing uh, our values of harmony with nature, together with the spirit of waste not, want not, as epitomized uh, in the expression Motainai, I hope that we can contribute to mitigating the impact of population and economic growth on natural resources and the environment. Thank you for listening to my uh, speech. Thank you, Mr. Hasegawa, who wants to ask the first question, Anthony. Anthony Rowe, is in for Business Times. I'm tempted to address you as Prime Minister Hasegawa after that speech. Perhaps I have a wait for a while. Until you're actually elected. Um, actually, my speech, my question is more on the prosaic um, Since the crisis, it's been suggested that because of the supply interruption, that um, overseas companies in particular might look to other countries, for example, South Korea and Taiwan and so on, for alternative sources of supply, and also that some Japanese companies may now relocate more outside of Japan. Realistically, what, to what extent is that all this might not happen? It is very difficult to measure uh, to what extent uh, that kind of relocation uh, uh, within the uh, country or outside the country is not happening because of the, the supply chain uh, interruption uh, due to the uh, big outbreak. But having said that, it is uh, uh, we cannot blame uh, our neighbor countries like uh, Korea, Taiwan, and uh, even China to take uh, this as an opportunity to, to uh, get uh, gain the business opportunity. So to the best way to avoid that, we have to uh, restore, uh, restart the uh, production as soon as possible, as quick as possible. Or uh, the lesson learned is to uh, have more inventories, even though it's against the uh, you know, just-in-time uh, system uh, developed by uh, one of those more manufacturers in Japan, applied to many other manufacturers in Japan. Maybe uh, to some extent that we have to change our practices. In our case, the pharmaceutical industry is very unique. So in our case, after experiencing a big typhoon uh, in our Yamaguchi prefecture plant uh, five, six years ago, we decided to restore one year was in the time, just before the uh, uh, final product, the finish product stays status. So um, by doing so, uh, we can uh, uh, sustain our supply uh, in, uh, uh, under the current uh, at this time of the big aspect. But we'll see. It's very different. But uh, you know one one cannot be naive enough to believe that you know, never companies don't take this as an advantage to get business. Next question. Next question. <laughs> Please. Okay. The friendly one. Yes. No, no. <laughs> uh, my name is Hiroki Shia, and I'm a Jiro under the Kokum in Shimpan. Uh, it's published 1890 by Tokutomi Soho. Uh, as you raised the issue of uh, very political uh, principle of normal aggression, uh, I'd like to ask you that uh, I'm going to deny the existence of uh, self-defense forces or do you think the 
let's say article nine is uh, practical, realistic. Uh, that's a tricky question. <laughs> um, I, I, I was expecting more of the question. <laughs> um, you know, um, in my opinion, it is not appropriate to discuss about the, the appropriateness of the art behind our constitution. Before we get into that stage, my attitude or suggestion is to amend any of the uh, article in, in the uh, const our constitution. Nobody can oppose. There are several uh, you know, line items or articles. The majority of the people can uh, support. By doing so, we can create a success history, small success history. And the people get used to, or uh, people, rea people realize, oh, a constitution is amendable. But without having that experience, uh, going uh, talking about the art of mind is too far to, to see. Sorry, but that's my suggestion. Next question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm helping you. As it answer. Well, you have expressed the necessity of a strong political leadership. How do you appreciate the leadership of Mr. Khan for overcoming the difficulty? Or what do you should do? Major disappointment. I'm sorry. Same subject, actually, almost the same. Um, there's been a lot of damage to supply chains as a result of this crisis. No one seems to quite understand exactly how these work and how bad the damage is. I mean, is this something, in your view, that will pass? And that, you know, the earthquake, this earthquake is a very rare um, happening. It's not going to happen yet for a long time. So, or is it necessary in some way to modify the system of supply chains? And then also, very quickly, related to that, um, Production is getting back to normal quite quickly in some cases, but I assume that some of the factories, for example, have been damaged in the worst areas. The infrastructure has to be rebuilt, and how long realistically would it take to rebuild those plants in the given place? First of all, uh, we need to learn the lesson from the uh, president. Uh, for example, uh, all the parts are piston ring uh, being manufactured by one company get damaged uh, a few years ago and uh, everybody gets stuck in you know, resuming the production. So everybody, every automaker has sent a technician in Nigeria to fix that problem. Having experience in that, we have to learn from this and not relying on one supply source is a very risky proposition. We have to have two resources, so two supply sources at least. And that's a lesson. And another lesson we have to learn, uh, often time, uh, uh, Immediately after this big earthquake and the tsunami, and many people said that this, that this is unprecedented. But this magnitude of uh, earthquake and the tsunami happened only 125 years ago. And it is written in the book. But people have short memory, so people just uh, that tend, to, tend to forget what happened in the past. But uh, living in the modern, uh, te uh, high, high technological world and uh, you know, the IT technology advanced world, we cannot repeat the same mistake again. And uh, in terms of the uh, time frame of complete restoration of the supply chain, uh, we run the uh, questionnaire uh, amongst the membership uh, countries, uh, companies in the case of Doyuka. And the uh, majority of the, uh, the supply uh, uh, sources have already completely restored. But uh, maybe less than 20% of the suppliers uh, said that it may take uh, until the end of this year to completely restore the uh, supply production. That's the uh, best I know I can answer to that question. Uh, thank you. My name is Hiduma, Oriental Times. My question is to do with uh, the business and regulatory issues. Ten years or so ago, we had a financial meltdown. 
at that time the fund, the panel act and independent uh, fully uh, independent uh, regulators which have uh, independent enough knowledge, technical uh, professional knowledge of regulating the banking community. Instead, at that time we had we found that there were two cozy relations between bank community and regulators. Now once again we are seeing the same kind of situation between utilities and regulators. Um, so I'd like to have you say now some comment about this regulator and business relations and uh, in general or and, and about this uh, nuclear plant regulation in particular. I'm not a nuclear expert so I cannot uh, comment on this except for my personal opinion. Um, it is obvious that this nuclear uh, power plant uh, policy was jointly developed between the government and the private, quote unquote, uh, private electricity company, such as uh, Total Electricity. So uh, the responsibility, in my opinion, resides on both sides. How you call it or even the question. And I don't know, I cannot say which side has more uh, rating responsibility because I don't know the detail of the history. And uh, second of all, um, the problem of uh, nuclear power plant uh, or nuclear energy uh, policy is uh, knowing this is not completely safe. There is no perfectly safe energy source in the world, except for maybe sunshine solar, uh, within uh, 4.5 billion years, solar, uh, solar system will be safe for human beings if uh, we can live that long. But other than that, obviously nuclear uh, energy creation uh, has uh, associated risk. And uh, even though uh, whatever you do to uh, mitigate the risk, it, the risk will happen on time. To time. But knowing that, but the people associated with the nuclear uh, power uh, policy making avoided inconvenient truths. Say this is saving us, so we need we don't need any countermeasures uh, if uh, you know, something beyond our expectation happens. Then it happens, then we get into the major trouble. So this has to be uh, changed uh, if we were willing to learn the lessons from this uh, disaster. And I hope nuclear uh, 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 energy uh, policy makers uh, will uh, consider their policies. We talked about the employment system. Um, Japanese companies should uh, employ not only in regard of age and nationality, but uh, to employ people in regard of their age is very deep rooted in, I think, uh, Japanese uh, employment system. And I think uh, unions will not be in favor to change this. Do you, are you in favor to change Japanese employment system? Yes, I'm uh, supportive of the change of Japanese employment system. There are several uh, you know, uh, factors we need to consider. We are facing declining population, and if we were to uh, sustain our economic growth, we have to stop declining population at a certain level. And to make that happen, there are only two ways. Ask people to work longer, and ask women to uh, work, stay in the workplaces, and invite foreign workers to Japan. Three possible scenarios. And uh, from the imp implementation, easiness of the implementation at, at the viewpoint, first two alternatives are easier than the last alternative in the current Japanese environment. There is no immigra immigra immigration laws in Japan. Only immigration law is applied to the people who are moving outside of Japan. Like Brazil, 
uh, 15 or 100 years. That's only the goal we have for immigrants. So uh, Japan is not expecting to get massive immigrants from outside. So we have, we have to change that. And uh, Japan is a kind of unique country uh, who is a nation who believes that they are unique. But in that respect, uh, they are unique. We are not unique, but they think they are unique. It's the uniqueness of the Japanese. Sound. It's also unique. Well, you said, Jameson, that you forgot what you think was that Japan is the world's largest creditor nation as compared with the United States, which is the world's largest debtor nation. Uh, the personal assets of this country are 14,000 uh, trillion yen, or, well, $14,000. That's the equivalent of one, in, one entire year of the American GDP. So you have money. The, the problem is nobody wants to uh, be taxed on it. This would be impossibility of getting a tax number. Anytime the word consumer taxes is mentioned, that sounds. They tried coming up with a cause, a, a, a tax to promote recovery. That's out. Uh, the, the problem is the health uh, and I guess the business community has already given up on the reduction of 5% of the corporate tax as it were. So that how, how are you going to pay for all of this when you're unwilling to have all this money and don't want to spend a, a, a yen of it on, on anything uh, to improve the situation? Uh, first of all, uh, I guess uh, what you're talking about, the 1,400 trillion yen, is a personal savings, cumulative uh, aggregated amount of personal savings. But you have to subtract uh, approximately 400, 400 trillion yen from that. Uh, because they have their, their debt or loans. So net-net uh, asset uh, or saving is uh, approximately 1,000 trillion net. But on the other hand, the cumulative national debt is approaching to that level. So we are approaching that very dangerous zone, and we can no longer uh, sustain this uh, model. And because of those savings deposited in the postal system or banking system, those uh, postal system and banking system are acquired buying the national bond. That's why the 95% of the national bonds issued are uh, consumed domestically in Japan. But that situation will change sooner or later, very soon, because of that situation. And uh, second of all, how to repay those uh, cumulative debt? Uh, there are several ways, hyperinflation. Uh, that, uh, you know, wipe away that all the national debt. That's a, that's, that's a doomsday scenario. But more realistically, only the three measures uh, we can uh, uh, probably implement. And I am uh, uh, alluding uh, the, uh, what uh, David Cameron is implementing and say and saying publicly. He said in Seoul uh, last year, November, at the G20 and the B20 uh, summit meeting and also World Economic Forum in this year, towards the end of uh, January. Cumulative national debt of the United Kingdom is approaching to 80% of the uh, GDP per year. And he said this is uh, not sustainable, we have to take actions. There are only three countermeasures we can implement solve this problem. Implement the growth strategy and stick with that. Number two, reduce expenses. So he said, you know, he is going to cut across the ministry's expenses by 19% uh, between now and the year 2014. He claimed he is going to resolve the diet and the call for the general election between now and then. Fabri, he, he said he has to increase the taxes. But in general, revenue cut or expense cut has to be greater than the revenue increase. That's the only way to convince uh, people. So he is uh, adamantly implementing that. Uh, but the question is uh, whether our uh, political leaders have that kind of determination and guts. I am skeptical.
before I say my name, uh, uh, regarding the income from the truth of this part and what is the uh, nuclear energy position in this country in the near future? And also, how do you value the uh, structure of uh, how about the planet? Um, I, I think it is a, a common knowledge amongst you uh, at present today. Uh, we are relying on 30 percent of the electricity from a nuclear power plant. Uh, even though uh, I don't know the most updated numbers percentage because 34 out of 54 power plants are being shut down or uh, overhauled. So only 20 are acting. acting, uh, acting. So maybe uh, you can consider the most latest situation maybe a person 20 percent is being generated. Having said that, uh, many people in academia particularly say uh, we can uh, replace uh, the nuclear, nuclear power plant uh, electricity with uh, renewable energy. But in the reality, in Japan, only less than 2% of the total electricity is uh, being generated from these renewable energy uh, sources, uh, such as windmill and uh, solar panel. So it is unrealistic. If you, unless uh, you consider the time frame of the implementation and the cost associated with the switch. Without uh, you know, uh, looking into those uh, factors, you know, doability is, means nothing, in my opinion. So in the nutshell, probably within the 20 to 30 years, it may be replaceable with uh, renewable energies. Depends on the uh, improvement of the cost and uh, efficiencies of those uh, renewable energies. And uh, with regard to the Hamaoka uh, nuclear power plant shutdown request made by the uh, Prime Minister, in my opinion, it is way beyond his uh, you know, authority. That's why he didn't mandate it. Instead, he just requested because he, he knows uh, that uh, his uh, remarks have no legitimacy. legitimacy. So just request, but being a president of that company, uh, if I put myself in his uh, shoes, I cannot decline because you never know when the aspect is not there. And if aspect attacks happen in the three months, and uh, we decline, I decline that request from the prime minister. You know, I I will be crucified. <laughs> so it's a very very tricky approach. I don't think it's appropriate. In this democratic world, I'm skeptical about the uh, notion of democracy within the DPJ and the leaders. You know, in this uh, democracy, democratic world, there is an organization and the processes are to be taken before Prime Minister gives the orders to request. For example, Nuclear Safety Committee or Nuclear Safety and uh, I don't know the name, uh, in the meeting are the ones who are qualified to make that kind of assessment. So well, what he needed to do is, uh, after you know, studying the uh, uh, aspect uh, the, the possibility of happening, 87% uh, in that part of the country, uh, way far uh, higher than other area. But fact of the matter is uh, Fukushima was 0% before actual, actual aspect happened. So 87% in that part of the country is uh, not 100% reliable. So having had that in your mind, the best way is ask to, uh, for him to is to ask that committee with his concern and make them uh, re uh, recommendations to the government. But that process has to completely ignored, and there are many pre uh, similar examples asking them to forego their loans uh, to build the and uh, to get electricity without uh, you know the basis. It's a well go beyond the democracy. I'm uh, I'm skeptical about when I'm living in a real democracy. Sorry. Uh, my name is Joël Jean from RTL uh, Radio Television in France. Just uh, very simply, and the question people have around the world is: you partially answer that. Will Japan recover or not? So what is your assessment? What will happen to you from here from this? And can we uh, say to the communism? 
road to a combat work hard? Uh, there is no ground on my answer. On my answer. This is not just uh, my personal thing, but uh, I'm afraid the, uh, putting the uh, nuclear power plants in Fukushima under control is in the timeline uh, they announced because the end of uh, this year will be uh, very difficult. I'm uh, a little bit So it's going to bring up no We have uh, time for one last question. Uh, I, I will let the lady Anthony, if you don't mind, to ask the last question since Takeda uh, is promoting women. <laughs> 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 no, the government is promoting 70% of the managerial positions. Please, please ask uh, an aggressive question. <laughs> yeah, I can tolerate an uh, aggressive question from the woman. <laughs> I'm used to it at home. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Hana Yuki from Dow Jones. Uh, there seems to be a recent pickup in uh, m and and Japanese companies in the Bangladesh drama again. Um, I just wanted to ask your opinion. <laughs> um, even after the quake, obviously, there's been my time to that into Shiba. And um, I just wanted to hear your opinion on how you see this trend going. Do you think cash rich Japanese companies will continue to be more aggressive in m and Or, um, yeah, just your opinion. I can't speak for others. And, uh, the timing of uh, the announcement of the uh, Nakamura position for Takeda is uh, just a coincidence. We've been working on this uh, for nine months or so. Uh, we started the uh, serious discussion with them way back in uh, before the autumn of last, last year. So just uh, coincidentally, uh, the timing of the announcement last week. And with regard to the uh, other companies, uh, if um, this is my opinion, if uh, the Japanese companies are going to acquire foreign companies, best matchup is uh, gap filling the target companies. Regardless of that uh, gaps uh, uh, you may have, or whether it's uh, Research capability or production capacity or uh, geographical footprint or uh, global talent, and you name it. But if you have a serious gap uh, to implement your vision of globalization, and if you identify the target, fill into those gaps as many as possible, then you should at least seriously examine the opportunity and uh, go after it. There's uh, two, three gaps, two, three elements of that one's gaps. Uh, I'm uh, very much uh, vocal about the uh, m and uh, you know, criteria. I have uh, five criteria, including those already I said. Uh, and and on, on top of that, the uh, culture proximity, or similarity, or management style similarities are uh, another important component to consider. And if you, a target company feels uh, two, three out of five gaps, and we should uh, take a serious look and at least support them and uh, uh, see how they react. And uh, the timing was happened to be the you know, all time uh, strong end situation with all time low interest rate. God bless us. Thank you. Maybe one last question for one Anthony. One more? One more. <laughs> Anthony, you have one? Yeah, it will be the last one. So. The short one, the short answer. You referred to the trilateral summit of the weekend, which I think most people thought was very successful. But you also seem to um, indicate that you're in favor of Japan joining the TPP. Of course, China is not a member of the TPP and is not likely to be able to see the future. Do you really think the TPP is the best way forward for Japan, given the enormous importance of China? No, I don't think so. Any kind of uh, economic partnership agreement, uh, free trade agreement, including Doha Round and the TPP, we should pursue because we don't know which one is going to realize. So without knowing that, uh, you know, just uh, making a, a priority and uh, I don't go after the other alternatives uh, with lower priority is a silly. So um, 
Japan, Japanese government should go full court press on this uh, form. That is my suggestion. Thank you very much, Mr. Asegawa, for coming today. Thank you very much for being here. And I accept the opportunity to share this time with you. Thank you.